Greetings and welcome to a new video about another synchronous motor example. This will be our example number four. In this example, we will look in great detail to the generated back EMF and also the torque angle for a synchronous motor. So let's look at the problem. We have a 500 volts RMS 60 hertz six pole three phase star connected synchronous motor. It has a per phase state resistance of 1 ohms and also a state reactance of 5 ohms. Now what we know for this motor is it draws 29 amps per phase at the unity power factor. That's the first condition. In the next condition we have the load increase so the load for the torque is increased and then the motor draws draws more current in this case 75 amps per phase now we keep in both cases for drawing current the field current the same so by having the field currents the same that will result also in the back eml will be in magnitude the same so this is a very important condition so what we want is now for the new situation where the loads increase calculation of the developed torque for case thus for the load increased so how do we work this out in this particular situation so let's look at our solutions and again we start always with our model this is the synchronous motor model for our one phase of course we are talking about three phase so we need to use this per phase model and then convert to the three phase system using the specific formulas and we will come to that later in great detail so first always we start with the kilo voltage load to develop the voltage equation here so we have the phase voltage here and also the phase current we have the resistor and also the reactance for one phase and this is our generated back emf with its own torque angle and also the magnitude so if i now develop the kilo voltage law here so this voltage will be across the rs and also across this reactance plus the generated back emf all given here if i rewrite this such that i have the back emf given here i can then write rewrite this expression like so so this is then for this situation and if i now combine these two as one impedance let's say zs for the stator then i can also rewrite this expression like so that will be of course also a little bit easy to follow now for a stator connected motor the phase voltage will be given by this expression going from the line voltage to the phase voltage you will then divide the line voltage by square root of three and you will get 500 volts rms over square root of 3, you will get 289 volts still in RMS. Now, we can of course convert this to the polar notation where you see the magnitude and also the phase. And you can see again that the phase here is 0 degrees because we take the phase voltage as our reference. Okay, now going to the next one, which is the phase uh, impedance of the, the, the stator impedance, the per phase. Now we know already this is then the summation or the series combination of the stator resistance and also the stator reactance. Now both of them are given in the for in the problem, so it is one plus J5 ohms. And if I now convert this to from the rectangular representation to the polar representation, I have then this expression. This is the magnitude, and this is then the the argument or the phase. Now I just substitute the values. 1 ohm and 5 ohms i will then have this expression if i now rewrite this and also work it out you will get 5.1 ohms and also very close to 79 degrees that's the expression for our impedance now let's then start with the case one situation where we have a phase current of 29 amps and then the power factor will be unity or one so what we have then is the following the power factor for condition one or case one is given by this formula where you of course consider just one frequency the cosine of that angle will be then the power factor for this case now rewriting this we know then the theta one which is then the associated phase for our current 
Now, if I just then substitute for the power factor 1, I will get 0 degrees for r theta 1. Now, we know that this 29 amps as the magnitude for our current in case 1. And now, using the power factor formula, we know also the phase contribution for our current here. So, it is then 0 degrees. So, this is the expression in the polar form. And then we have the following situation using this formula specifically for case 1. We know then this is the phase voltage, this is the phase current for case 1, and this is already calculated for our impedance. Now, just multiply 29 times 5.1 as the magnitude and also add the phases in this polar form. You can do that very easily. And then in order to calculate this, because it's a subtraction, we need to convert this and this to the rectangular form using this formula. So you can see the cosine and the sine of this angle, add them up in this form. You have the similar form here, and you of course have then the magnitudes out of this bracket. So we can parentheses. So we can have then the 261 minus J145 volts in total as the real and also the imaginary part. Now going from this to the polar form, again using actually a similar form as we did here for the impedance, you will have 299 volts with a phase of minus 29 degrees. So what you see now here, the power factor is unity or one. We have the generate back EMF of 299, which is larger than the phase voltage. Now, if I also go to the phasor diagram. So the diagram what we have here. So the first one is the reference, which is our phase voltage. And that is then 289 volts. The current is in phase with our voltage. That's why it is a power factor of one. And that is then the IS1. And that is 29 amps. Now the torque, I mean the back EMF here, which is then given by this red line, is then the generate back EMF, it has a value of 299 volts. And the associated phase for that one, which is called the torque angle, is minus 29 degrees. Now, we also have additional voltage drop across this, these two elements, which is then the impedance, and that is then given by this arrow, and that is actually then the voltage of 148 volts here. Of course, this is then uh, combination of the voltage drop across the resistor and also the voltage drop across the reactants here. So we can also combine them together in this form. So this is the resistor voltage and this is the voltage across this reactance by the inductor. So we have then also these two. So now it's the complete picture where you see the generated back EMF, the phase voltage, the current and also the torque angle. This is for case one. So we will now move on to the next one, which is then the case two, where the load is increased, where we have more current, and then we will calculate what then the developed torque is. So let's move to the next one, where we have the phase current of 75 amps, and the field current is unchanged. So that means actually the following. When the load increases, but the field current is unchanged, then the back EMF, the magnitude of the back EMF, must remain the same as before. So that means actually the following. We have then the back EMF generated for this case, new case, case two, will be the generated back EMF in case one, a magnitude, what was that? It was 299 volts. So we can also use this in our calculations. And we also know that the expression for our phase current here is 75 amps with the associated angle. So we also need to calculate that. Okay, now again, we can set up the equation for this voltage generated back EMF using Kirchhoff voltage law again, shown here with the specific subscript for the second case. Now we know 299 volts for our back generated back EMF, and now a new torque angle will be there that is, of course, changing in this new case. We still have the phase voltage, and also the current is given in magnitude, but the phase is not given. And we have the 5.1 ohms and also the 79 degrees for the, uh, the impedance here. So what you see in this expression that we have two unknowns. So we have a torque angle in the second case and also the phase contribution by the state of current in the second case. So we have two unknowns. We need another expression to calculate 
each of them individually. So we can of course work this out and in order to calculate of course this we multiply the magnitudes and also add the faces so it's actually shown here. So if I now work it out in great detail also for this one for each term so for the left side and for the two terms on the right hand side using from the conversion from the polar to the rectangular you can see that this exact same procedure as we did before so the cosine and the sine of the angle and also do that here for the cosine and the sine of the angle and also for this case you take the cosine and the sine of the angle and for the sine you will put the j as the imaginary part now if you work this out and you simplify this you will get this expression now in order to continue we need to equate the real and imaginary parts so we have the real part here on the left hand side and also the real part on the right hand side so we will equate that and we have also the imaginary part in the left hand side and also the imaginary part here on the right hand side so if i now do that real part is equal to the real part for the left and the right hand side and similar for imaginary part is equal to the imaginary part on the right hand side now if i now work this second equation out i express that in this form and i have then the sine of the delta 2 will be then this expression on the right hand side over 299. now if i move on and then equate that isolate actually the delta 2 i will have this expression now i will can use this expression in the expression for the situation for the real parts of this expression so i can now move on and then say just substitute this delta 2 in here and then i have an expre expression only with the, uh, theta 2's that's actually shown here so we have only theta 2's and this is of course uh, you can solve this because there is only one unknown here so if i now solve this we get them for theta 2 minus 31 degrees now once we know this we can then substitute in here and we know the torque angle for the second case so this is then the new power factor angle so our new power factor using this formula will be then the so cosine of that theta 2 will be then cosine of minus 31 degrees will be then 0 0.86 but it is lagging because it is a minus sign now for the torque angle for the new case i just substitute the value for the theta 2 in this expression you just type that in your calculator or do that in a different form you will get minus 72 degrees so we have now the theta 2 and also the torque angle for the second case delta 2 and that is what we required for our second case in order to now calculate the develop torque which is of course the calculation what we require we will move on to the next form so what we have is then the develop power that is the power at the output so the develop power is also the output power so in our case we have of course the input power that is the output power plus the power we lose in the system or in this motor now we have then the output power which is then developed power but then input power minus the losses so we need to know the losses and we need to also know the input power the input power is will be then for the three three phase system will be then three times the phase voltage times the phase current and also the power factor for the second case in this case now we know the phase voltage in magnitude and also the phase current is already given and we know the power factor which is also calculated here now if i now substitute the values we will get 555,737 watts for p in now the losses are due to the resistor here so we have done again three times due to that three phase i s squared times the r s we know it is 75 amps so we square that times one and you do that three times because it's a three phase and you will get 16,875 watts and that's the power we lose and that's the power we add now we can use this formula to calculate the p out and that will be then this expression and it will give us 38,862 watts so our developed torque can now be calculated using this because it's also the developed power so we can then use developed torque is equal to the power we develop over the rotation speed in radius per second the mechanical speed will be then given by this expression which is then 2 over the number of poles times the electrical 
speed or electrical frequency. The electrical frequency here is 60 Hertz. So we can say it is 2 over 6, so we have 6 poles and it is 120 pi because it is 60 Hertz times 2 pi will be then our omega e in radius per second. If I now work this out, I will get exactly 40 pi radius per second for our omega m for our rotation speed. Now, combining these two information here and also our output power, also our develop power is the same, you will have this 309 newton meters for our develop torque. And that is actually the answer for this question. Now, if I also look in great detail for the second case to our phasor diagram, we have again our reference phase voltage and with the same voltage 289 volts. And now the current will be, of course, lagging. So there's a different current value and also different phase for the specific current, which is the minus 31 degrees. The associated back EMF, generate back EMF for the second case is still 299 volts, but the torque angle or the associated angle delta 2 will be then here minus 72 Degree. So it is more negative than the first case. And that is then for this situation using having a more or increased load. Okay, let's look at the problem in, in summary. So we have the power factor, which was unity, and we have then changed our load and that caused a lagging power factor. You can see the per phase back EMF still same in magnitude, but it has a torque angle changing or decreasing from minus 29 degrees to minus 72 degrees. You can also see the per phase stator current given here is IS was 29 amps with a zero degrees orientation because it is unity. But well, now it is 75 amps, but now with the lagging power factor, you can also see that by the minus sign of minus 31 degrees. Now looking to power factor one, we have this diagram and you can look in also the power factor with 0.86 lagging. You have this diagram. You can see again in, in this diagram what will happen when you increase your load. When the field current remains the same, so that is mandatory. If the field current is changing, your back EMF will also change. Since this is remaining the same, the, the back EMF, generated back EMF voltage and magnitude is the same. So we can use that also in the second case. All right, this is for this example about the synchronous motor where we increase load, remaining of course the field current the same, and also moving to another situation where we have then the developed torque. So we have worked out this step by step. If you have any questions or suggestions about the problem, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time. Take care.